Need to make money fast? Once you hit mid game, the money starts rolling in. Once in late game, you can make bank. But what do I mean by mid game? It really depends on the skill. With farming, it's once you have 9 plots of farmland and can make quality up fertilizer. Hunting? Pretty much when you have access to bronze arrows. Fishing? When you have access to the fisherman brew and at least a bronze rod and worms. Currently, the other professions do not make enough money to include them. To really make bank, you need to rotate through at least two of the money making professions. Before we get into the current best money making methods, we need to go over the issues with money in Balia. Currently, money is the time gate to getting most of the blueprints and items in the game. Singularity 6 is attempting to balance the amount of gold that can be gained in a certain period of time to keep players playing. Unfortunately, this is turning Polya into a super grindy game. There are better solutions, but we will go over that in my review of Polya. The most important thing to remember is to make gold, you will constantly need to adjust and use the best methods as fast as possible. Hunting, for instance, used to be 10k gold per 300 deer killed, at least killing the basic deer in Kalima. Now 300 basic deer in Kalima will only get you around 5k gold. Not that long ago, players could get almost 20k gold. So big nerfs to gold making. In my previous video, I showed hunting as one of the best ways to make money early game. Since the gold on deer hunting has been halved, deer hunting has moved into second place on early game gold farming. When you reach iron arrows, killing the stronger deer in Bahari can be profitable, moving back up to around 12k per 300 killed but you have to hit them three times to kill them, and that means chasing them, and it takes 900 arrows if you never miss. That is 45 iron and 180 wood. While that does not sound like a lot, it does take some time to build up that much iron. It then takes 10 to 15 minutes to make the arrows, and as you can see, the preparation time adds up, making it less profitable. That is not to say you won't want to hunt to maximize your gold making. You will want to choose between hunting and fishing. If you get bored of one, switch to the other. Fishing in mid game is fairly profitable if you're growing your own worms. If you're buying worms, less so. Since fertilizer is important mid game, I like to drop four worm farms down. This generates all the worms I need with the time I have to play Polya, anyway. It also makes all the fertilizer I will need for farming. Now, in the last video, I mentioned the river gives the best gold early game. So that is based on how hard the fish are to pull in and how much value the fish have. If you have no issue catching even hard fish with the basic rod, then the best spot early game for gold would be the ocean in Bahari. But is that the best place with worms? Or what about late game with the exquisite bow and glowworms? If you're enjoying the video, smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Let's pop up on the screen here my findings of how much gold on average a player can make at each location without worms, with worms, and with glowworms. This assumes that you are at least as good at fishing as I am and rarely lose a fish. In an hour I might lose two fish. These numbers do not come from fishing for 10 minutes then going, yeah, multiply that by 6 and that's what you can make in an hour. That kind of logic is flawed. And here's why. Fishing in the pond for 15 minutes, no worms, I made 548 gold. Now if I multiplied that by 4 to get what I should make in an hour, it comes up to 2,192 gold. But that's not how fishing works. Players are not guaranteed to catch the same fish over and over, and there are chances to catch different fish. Then there's the time changes. Players catch different fish based on the time of day. So for certain periods, there is a chance to catch fish worth even more money. The next thing this kind of calculation does not take into effect is the hotspots. The longer you're in one area, the more hotspots a player will get, increasing the gold. After several one hour tests, I came up with the average amount of gold one should expect. Some trips will be more, some will be less. So rather than the 2,192 gold I would get fishing in ponds with no bait, it will actually bring it closer to 3,500 gold per hour. Now, that is with an exquisite rod, which reels in faster than a basic rod, allowing more fish to be caught. 
but all the tests were done with the exquisite rod. Now, with a basic rod, the value will be less all around. The price should not be too far off with an iron rod, though. So, this should give a decent idea how much money can be made fishing. The amount of gold is about on par with hunting, so we shouldn't see too much of a value drop anytime soon, but you never know. Time-wise, since worms are passive while you sleep, fishing now comes in ahead of hunting for time versus gold. Kind of. The worm farm is passive, but this still requires time. It just gets to be offline time. Let us know in the comments below if you feel the gold nerfing is needed to balance the game, or if it has gone too low and made the game less fun. Once an hour, head back to your farm from hunting or fishing to sell your loot, repair, and to farm. That's right, it's time to go over min-game farming and how to maximize your money making. Farming is not exactly passive. In order for your plants to advance, a player has to visit their plot of land during the game day. For instance, if a player uses water retention fertilizer or tomatoes to get the effect, and then logs off, and the next day ticks, the player will get credit for that day and gain a day of growth. But the player does not sign back in during the next game day before it ticks over to 6 a.m., well then no growth happens, even if the plants have water retention. A game day equals one hour real life time. So you must log in or return to your farm once a game day to get the plants to continue growing. Other than to save a couple of minutes watering, there is no reason to use water retention fertilizer. That out of the way, once you have nine plots of land, it's time to make bank. It helps and will be needed to be able to make or farm quality fertilizer. The layout I use, which I know could be a little more efficient, but after doing the math, the extra one to two thousand gold at late game it brings in is not worth the headache to do so. Now the way I do it is set up my farm land in a 3x3 three three grid. I then start out on the side I like, left to right, but you do you. First row goes tomatoes. The second row alternates wheat and rice, every other square. The next two rows is tomatoes. Then another row of wheat and rice alternating. The final row will be tomatoes. The reason behind wheat and rice is that the effect of multiplying the amount harvested now applies to both the wheat and the rice. As shown in the previous go video, wheat effects will not affect wheat. This only increases the gold slightly though, so if you prefer all rice, go for it. This layout is what will be used late game as well, but late game all crops will be coming out at star quality with less work needed. But once your fishing skill is high enough, it is time to place worm farms. Four worm farms will provide enough fertilizer to bring in quality crops. In late game, we will not need fertilizer, so make sure to keep watching. Now, you can craft the quality fertilizer if you prefer. It takes a bug, a meat, and a tulip for 20. For each full harvest period, we will need 1,296 fertilizer. We could get away with less currently, but I imagine that we've patched in the future. So let's go over the right way first. Every day you need to apply quality fertilizer to the crops to get starred crops, increasing the profits significantly. Currently, you can place multiple fertilizers onto one spot. If you have enough fertilizer to put 12 on every spot, the fertilizer will last until all the tomatoes have been harvested. Rarely have I had an issue with the fertilizer not lasting all 12 days when I drop 12, but it does happen here and there, so watch for that when watering the plants. The trick to save on fertilizer currently is to keep up with how many days the plant has been down. Rice is 3 days, tomato 4 days. So for rice, on day 2, put one fertilizer on it. And on day 3, put one fertilizer on the tomatoes or wheat. The next day, the fertilizer will get used up and bam, harvestable star quality plants. Now I doubt this is intended and will most likely get patched, so use it while you can. The next trick is to harvest the wheat and rice every time it is ready and replant it. Now, of course, this will only net you a small amount of profit while you're buying the seeds. It may just be better to plant them one time and leave them until you have seed makers. It is up to you if the slight profit is worth your time or not. 
Now, once you have the seed makers, oh boy, your profits open up. You can now take those star quality plants you've been harvesting and turn them into seeds. And seeds are worth way more than the base plant. Now, by placing star quality plants into seed makers, you will get star quality seeds. There is a chance to get regular quality seeds from a star quality plant, but currently it is close to 10%. That could change later. Make sure to keep 60 star quality tomato seeds in stock so that you never run out. Keep 20 star wheat and rice seeds as well. Sell the rest. Once you're planting star quality seeds, you no longer need to apply quality boost fertilizer. This makes farming even faster and easier. Once your farming becomes high enough level to get the jam makers, you are set. At least currently. With a tomato seed nerf, Tomato seeds are still worth more than the tomatoes, but less than the tomato jam. So swap out seed makers for jam makers. Just make sure to keep three to four seed makers down to replace the seeds that you're using. Spam out the jam and make some bank. I like to take the non-star quality tomatoes and use them in recipes and for worm farms. The glowworm farms give two types of fertilizer. If you feed the glowworms sweet foods like blueberry jam, it gives back quick grow fertilizer. If you feed it other foods, it gives back fertilizer that provides the wheat and rice effect. Now, due to how slow it produces fertilizer, I prefer just to sell the fertilizer and continue using wheat and rice for the effect. It would be slightly more profitable to use the glowworm fertilizer and plant only tomatoes, but the amount of work added and needing to keep six glowworm farms going, it's just not worth the extra gold to me anyway. But I mention it so that you can decide for yourself what works best for you. Now, you're probably wondering about apples and blueberries. Surely they are more profitable since they are locked behind tokens that are only obtainable after level 10. And what about cooking? Well, apples take so long to grow, about 12 days between harvest, and only provide around 16 apples, it's not great gold-wise. Yes, apples are worth the most individually, especially as jam, but the trees just produce too little, too slow, to make them worth it for gold purposes. Same with the blueberries. I'm sure there will be some more balances in the future that change this and you will need them for recipes, but for gold only purposes, they're not worth it currently. Then there is cooking. While cooking seems like it would make a lot of money, the process takes a while, requires purchased ingredients oftentimes, and needs rare forgeables for some of the better priced recipes. Making the time investment versus profits not great. In the end, most of the recipes only come out just a little above the value of all the combined ingredients. Cooking needs a big balance change. Cooking should be the money maker in Palia. Now, of course, if you cook as a team, splitting the ingredients between several players, suddenly cooking does become more profitable as one person doesn't have to provide all the ingredients and still gets the full gold value benefit. So, if you can get a couple of people together that all want to make money cooking, it could be valuable. To make the most gold, hit your farm once an hour, then head out and hunt or fish. Rinse and repeat every hour, also known as in-game day. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.